I ended up deciding on playing through the text adventure game Bedlam. This has led into some interesting problems which we will get into in just a moment. As you can see, I'm loading the game onto a TRS-80 Model 1 with Level 2 Basic using the same system commands that you've gotten used to. The only difference is the command this time is Bedlam. Now, Bedlam was released in 1982 on the TRS-80 Model 1 and on the Model 3 using a 16K cassette. It was part number 26-1917 and the list price was $14.95. Later there was a port made for the TRS-80 color computer, which worked on the COCO 2 as well. And it's interesting to note that there are instructions in the manual for how to convert the game from a cassette to a diskette. As a semi-purist, I'm going to be using the cassette. Normally, text adventures from this era would include a story to read that would set up the tone of the game, but this game has no story in it. Now overall, Bedlam is a relatively small game with only 25 rooms to explore. There are very few items to interact with, and there is no way to die. There are a few ways you can get returned to the start point, though, which hopefully I will not have to show you. Now, I mentioned an earlier problem, and it's like this. A long time ago I played the game, and I pretty much remembered how I solved it. And there were some things that I kind of had to fill back in, but overall it was pretty easy and during my initial test run I ran through. I did the solution I remembered and it worked. So I set up to record and as I did my playthrough suddenly the solution didn't work. So put simply I've learned that there are multiple solutions to this game and to the best of my ability to figure out the solution you need is loaded randomly at startup. That means I'm forced to take a different approach in presentation Originally I thought I was going to break this down into three separate videos, each one with a different solution, but instead I'm going to have all three solutions, one right after the other. Now you should probably know I'm recording this over a period of multiple days and multiple sessions, so with that in mind I'm going to try to keep the same level of quality through the entire set. Now we are going to pause while we wait for the game to finish loading. And we are back. In case you are wondering if it sounded like I was reading from a pre-prepared statement, I kind of was. But from here on out, it's pretty much going to be winged. Now what we are going to see in the initial run-through is what I call Solution 1, or the blue pill. The only criteria for it being Solution 1 is that it's the same solution I remember from before. Okay, here we go with Bedlam playthrough number one. You feel as though you have just awakened from a very long, bad dream about doctors and padded rooms. Your thoughts are, where am I? This is a small square room. All four walls are covered with a thick padding. On the south wall there is a green door, which is closed. Let's open the door. The green door is now open. Going south, you're in an east-west hallway. On the north wall, there is a green door. On the south wall, there is a red door, which is closed. We are going to follow my map here and go to the west. You are in the west end of a very long east-west hallway. There is an opening to the west. On the north wall, there is a green door, which is closed. On the south wall, there is a red door, which is closed. I'm going to ignore the doors for now. West. This is the dispensary, a small square room with exits to the east, west, and south. There is a blue pill here. On one wall is a cabinet. The cabinet has a tiny hole in it. Let's get the pill. The blue pill taken. You hear a noise and notice a short, stocky, unshaven man wearing a bloody white surgical gown and holding a large hypodermic is staring at you. I do not wish to engage this person, so let's go west. You are in a maintenance room, a large room with exits east and west. There is a long handle window hook here. Let's get the window hook. The window hook is taken 
going to go west again just to show you what's there. This is the office. There is a single exit east. There is nothing special about that room. I do not even know why we go there. We are back in the maintenance room with a large room with exits east and west. I'm going to go east again. You're in the dispensary, a small square room with exits to the east, west, and south. On one wall is a cabinet. The cabinet has a tiny hole in it. And what we are going to do here is first look in the hole. Straining to see through the tiny hole, you can just make out a red key. It's not possible to reach into the tiny hole, so we cannot just get the red key. And we cannot open the cabinet. You can't seem to unlock the cabinet. So what we do is we're going to get red key with the hook. You get the key with the hook, red key taken. You hear a noise and notice a short, stocky, unshaven man wearing a bloody white surgical gown and holding a large hypodermic is staring at you. Let's go south. You're in the examination room where a doctor treats patients. There's a single exit north. There's nothing special about this room. Back into the dispensary. Nothing special about the room. We're going to go east. I'm giving you time to read it. East again. And this puts us in the hallway next to where we started. To the north is where we started. I'm going to go east again. It's the east-west hallway. On the north wall there is a green door which is closed. On the south wall there is a red door which is closed. We want to go east again. This is the east end of an east-west hallway. There is an opening to the east. On the north wall there is a green door which is closed. So we are going to go east and enter the electroshock therapy room. There is a single exit west. There is a green key here. There is a very large woman dressed in a uniform here. She looks like the roller derby queen. She has a jagged scar just below her hairline. She turns towards you and says, Oh, you must be here for the treatment. Just come right over here. She gestures towards something which looks like an electric couch. Now I'm going to go ahead and this time just try to take the key so that you can see what happens. Green key is taken. You're not cooperating, says the nurse as she lunges across the room and tackles you. She drags you to the couch and straps you in. Then she pulls an ominous lever and you experience the ultimate agony. Mercifully, you pass out. You awaken in your cell. So we are right now in the small square room. All four walls are covered with a thick padding and on the south there is a green door which is closed. So we're going to open the door again. Go south. Go east. Go east. Go east. And we're back where we just were. Now it took me a long time to figure out how to get through this. And originally I was using a method that took between 6 and 15 minutes of just trying to get to the right location. Uh, I might show that a little later. Instead I'm going to go west and get the green key with the hook from outside the room. Now that green key is very important in one of the uh, endings. Unfortunately I do not know which ending I am going to get until I try. So we're going to go west again. and We're in the east end hallway. Go west again and this is the east-west hallway. On the north there's a green door and the south there's a red door which is closed. I'm going to try and open the red door. The red door is locked. I'm going to unlock the red door with the red key. Then open the red door and head south. You're in another small padded room. On the north wall there is a red door. Did I overshoot? 
Well, while we are here, nothing special about the room. We'll go north again, go east. That red door is locked. Unlock it with the red key. Open the red door, go south. Now we are at the north end of a north-south hallway. This is where I intended to go, but I made the mistake of overshooting by one. I do that sometimes. On the north wall there is a red door. On the east wall there is a blue door which is closed. We're going to go south because we're checking to see which ending we have here. This is the north-south hallway. There is an exit east. On the west wall there is a blue door which is closed. So we are going to go east. You're in the kitchen which exits east, west, and south. In the northeast corner of the room there is a large refrigerator which is closed. That is a complicated word to spell. When you open the refrigerator some hamburger meat falls out of it onto the floor. Let's get the meat and then we want to go east. You are in the kennel. There is a west exit and an opening to the south. A vicious guard dog is chained to the south wall blocking the exit. Woof, growl, woof, woof. So let's put the pill in the meat. The pill seems to dissolve in the hamburger. Woof, growl, woof, woof. Let's give the meat to the dog. The dog wolfs down the hamburger. He must be pretty hungry. The dog looks sick. He weaves and falls over dead. At this point, my apologies to all pet lovers out there. I really do not like the idea of killing the dog, but it is how the game works. Now I'm going to try and head south. As you leave, several guards posted outside grab you and the dead dog and throw you in a small storage shed behind the building. You hear them lock the door and go away. So let's have a look. You're in the storage shed. There is a dead dog here. On the north wall there is a green door which is closed. So let's... The green door is locked. The green door is now unlocked. So let's open the door. The green door is now open. And then, because I want to go and type it the old-fashioned way, go north. You exit the shed and escape to freedom. That was the first ending that I discovered and the one that I tried to do the first uh, recording through that did not work. I really do not have a lot to say about it other than that was the ending that I discovered back um, a long time ago. Up until recently I had never played this on the TRS-80 Model 1 uh, like I am now, but I had played it on the TRS-80 Coco and I was a little worried that perhaps the endings had been changed when I first did this, but exploring I found this ending again, and here it is. Now let's go ahead and move on to another ending. What we are going to see in the second run-through is what I call Solution 2, or, or Never Skip Arm Day. It's a stupid joke, but it kind of fits. Let's get started. You feel as though you have just awakened from a very long, bad dream about doctors and padded rooms. Your thoughts are, where am I? You are in a small square room. All four walls are covered with a thick padding. On the south wall there is a green door, which is closed. Now one of the things about this game that is unfortunate is in order to tell which ending I am able to access, I have to try what I called the first ending. So we are going to quickly rush through and try and see if this is a first ending session or not.
probably would be better if I was talking to you during this, but it is much more quick to go through if I am not talking much. Oh, hello, Napoleon. We will probably come back to you later. Uh, let's... Okay, what we have here now is we have gone through all the steps that I did before in order to poison the dog, and the dog is not poisoned. So my next step is to determine whether or not this is a ending 2 or ending 3. Um, I do that by going, well, let's examine the room. There's nothing special about the room. And we're going to go west again, and Napoleon, as you notice, is following me. This is the kitchen which has exits to the east, west, and south, and in the northeast corner of the room there is a large refrigerator. We've already done the refrigerator. Napoleon is following, so let's examine the room. There is nothing special about the room. Go west again, and this is the north-south hallway with an exit to the east. On the west wall there is a blue door which is closed, and Napoleon enters the room. I am going to keep pointing out that Napoleon enters the room because I need to keep track of Napoleon. Let's start by going south. So we have not been here. This is the south end of a north-south hallway. There are east and west exits. An ancient man in a black cloak and pointed hat gestures at you. Demon, I have summoned you. I am your master, Merlin. You must obey my command. There is a funny-looking man hanging tied with a rope by his feet to the ceiling. He is wearing a straight jacket. He turns toward you. Hello, I am the great Houdini. No bonds can hold me. No locks can resist me. Wait, let me show you. I can get us both out of this place. He begins wriggling. Napoleon enters the room. None of the endings that I have found are tied to Merlin or to Houdini, so I am just going to leave them there. There's nothing special about the room. Let's go east. This is the dining room. Napoleon is still following us. Now directly north of us is the kitchen with the refrigerator. So uh, at this point, we're going to examine the room again. There's nothing special about the room. Uh, you'll find out later why I keep examining the room. I'm going to go west. And Napoleon is still following, and we are going into the recreation room. This is directly west of the um, room that had both Merlin and Houdini in. Notice Houdini stayed behind, but Merlin is following. So we still have Napoleon, and we have Merlin. Uh, let's examine the room. There's nothing special about the room. So we are going to go east again. Um, Napoleon and Merlin are following north. Uh, this is the room that is directly west of the kitchen, still being the room that had the refrigerator in it. Well, it still has a refrigerator in it. I'm not carrying a refrigerator around. If you notice, to the west there is a blue door. I'm going to open the blue door. The blue door is now open. Merlin says, Demon, I command you, reveal me the door of escape. Oh, we're going to go west into the room. This is another small padded room. On the east wall there is a blue door. A man in a white frock, a beret, and holding a palette and brush seems to be painting what looks like a door on one of the walls. He looks up. I am a great artist. My name is Picasso. Can I just not do an accent? I, I feel that's very demeaning. Uh, Napoleon enters the room, and Merlin enters the room. Picasso has painted a door on one wall. Let's examine the painted door. There's nothing special about it. You cannot open the painted door. Are you crazy? It's just a painted door. Let's go east again. This is a north-south hallway. There is an exit east. 
on the west wall there is a blue door napoleon enters the room picasso enters the room and merlin enters the room I have quite an entourage uh, again directly east is the kitchen we're going to go north this is the north end of a north south hallway on the north wall there is a red door on the east wall there is a blue door which is closed napoleon enters the room picasso enters the room notice merlin is no longer following uh, we want to want to open the blue door and go east you're in another small padded room on the west wall there is a blue door napoleon enters the room picasso enters the room there's nothing special about the room so we are going to go west again and uh, napoleon is with us but picasso is not with us let's go east again tell Picasso to follow me. Now we're back into the other room. It's the north end of the north-south hallway. You will notice that Napoleon and Picasso are with us. There's nothing special about this room. So let's go north. Again, notice Picasso is not following. In fact, where is Picasso? Well, we are going to uh, worry about Picasso later because I'm sure I will find him eventually. This is the north-south hallway. This is the east-west hallway. In order to give you your bearings, we are going... Well, let's examine the room first. We are going to go to the electroshock therapy room again. So now you have an idea of where we are. We are at the east end hallway. There is an opening to the east that leads to the electroshock therapy room. And on the north there is a green door which is closed. Let's open the green door, go north. It's another small padded room. There's a lot of these. There is a secret door here. Guess what? We have found exit number two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine the secret door. There's nothing special about the secret door. We are going to try and open. The secret door is stuck. You are not strong enough to open it. Here is why I wanted to have Napoleon with me. I am going to tell Napoleon to open the secret door. Napoleon grabs the secret door and busts it open. The secret door leads to escape. You've made it. I'm kind of happy that I left Picasso behind instead of spending time trying to find him now. I know I spent a little time, but that can be forgiven. So that is the secret door ending. It is the second ending, and there is one more ending. I hope it's really easy for me to find, and I do not have to go through multiple playthroughs in order to get it this time. We will fade out here and pick up with the next set. What we are going to see in this one, the third run through, is what I call Solution 3, the Painted Door. What I have done this time is I have gone ahead and ran through up to the kitchen, gotten the meat, put the pill in the meat, gone over to the kennel, and given the meat to the dog and the dog did not die on this playthrough, so this is either ending two or ending three. I am hoping ending three. We will find out. It is probably a good idea that I have done it this way because I was running into one of the problems of the game over and over and over and kept having to repeat steps just to get to here, and you missed out on quite a lot of work, but after everything is done, I am going to show you what that problem was. We are going to move back to the kitchen. 
which is the room with the refrigerator. And then we're going to go south into the dining room. There is uh, nothing there of importance. We're going to go west. Oh, look, there is that thing I was talking about. We will return to this, but uh, let me read it to you. This is the south end of a north-south hallway. There are exits east and west. A short, stocky, unshaven man wearing a bloody surgical gown and holding a large hypodermic is staring at you. The doctor says, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give you a frontal lobotomy. He sticks you with his hypo and you pass out. When you awaken, you feel somewhat indifferent to your surroundings. You notice blood on your gown. It doesn't seem to bother you. You feel like wandering. We're going to take just a moment and I'm going to reference something that is in the manual. It states, There are times during the game when you might be in serious danger. One particular resident of Bedlam can cause problems, which only a well-timed pl can cure. You must choose your allies wisely from among the people you meet. This is that time. Um, again, I'm going to explain to you later what this all means, but for right now, since we are going for ending three, hopefully, so we got better. We are back in our starting location. So let's open the door, head south, which puts us in the east-west hallway, and we're going to go west to the west end hallway. Directly to the west is the dispensary where we get the red key and we get the blue pill. So let's open the green door, which is to the north. Let's look in there. You're in another small padded room. On the south wall there is a green door. A man in dirty overalls and wearing goggles approaches you and introduces himself. Hi, my name is X-Ray Johnson, but you can call me Ray. I have X-Ray vision, you know. Say, you better have that spot in your left lung checked by a doctor. A man in a white frock, a beret, and holding a palette brush seems to be painting what looks like a door on one of the walls. He looks up. I am a great artist. My name is Picasso. An ancient man in black cloak and pointed hat gestures at you. Demon, I have summoned you. I am your master Merlin. You must obey my command. I will examine the painted door. Nothing special about it. It's just a painted door. We are going to examine the room. All right. I want Picasso to follow me. As you see, Picasso and Merlin are both following me. Nothing special about the room. Going to unlock the red door. Going to want to keep Picasso with me. Oh. The red door is now open. Now we will go south. Picasso and Merlin and Ray are both following us. You notice it's a small padded room again. Let us Examine the room. Nothing special about it. Move north. We are back in the hallway. We're going to go east. Everyone is still following. To the north is the room that we started in. Nothing special about the room. We'll go south again. I want to make sure that Picasso is still following me. So we're going to unlock the red door with the red key. Open the red door and go south. You are in another small padded room. On the north wall there is a red door. There is a man in a straitjacket in the corner. He looks up at you and mumbles, Oh, it's terrible. The doctor has become the patient and the patient the doctor. Listen to me. I am the doctor. You must go to the authorities and tell them of this travesty. Hurry, before it is too late. 
His eyes roll back into his head, and he passes out. Re enters the room. Picasso enters the room. Somewhere along the way, I have lost Merlin. Nothing special about the room. I probably should have been looking this whole time. It's just a painted door. We are, let's see, back in the hallway directly south of our starting place. On the north walls, there is one of Picasso's painted doors, which is closed. Now, you notice, none of the other rooms, when going into them, has said anything about Picasso's painted doors, until this tells me that we are on ending number three, because all I need to do is, let's see, we examine the room. Picasso has painted a door on one wall. Examine the painted door. There's nothing special about it. Let's open the painted door. The painted door opens to reveal an escape route. You have escaped. Honestly, we made really good time. I'm really happy that it came through this time. That would be the third ending that I have found. I kind of wish that there was a fourth ending that I could have found so far, but I have not. However, there is still one thing that I would like to show you, and we will get to that in just a moment. I guess fade out here. All right, I was talking about there being a thing that was really annoying to me. So let us load the game up. Uh, what I need to do here is I need to find the wandering doctor with the hypodermic needle. We're going to pause and there'll be a cut and I will come back when I find him. That was easy. I just went south and west a few times and there he was. So we are in the dispensary. This is the room that has the cabinet, the pill, and there's the key inside of the, the hole in the cabinet. And as you see, we have a short, stocky, unshaven man wearing a bloody white surgical gown and holding a large hypodermic staring at us. I want to get him to uh, punch me with the hypodermic. The doctor says, I grow tired of dealing with you inferiors. Okay, here we go. The doctor says, I am afraid I'm going to have to give you a frontal lobotomy. He sticks you with his hypo and you pass out. When you awaken, you feel somewhat indifferent to your surroundings. You notice blood on your gown, but it doesn't seem to bother you. You feel like wandering. As before in the third solution playthrough, You'll notice that we are back in our originating room, the starting room, and the door will be closed. And unlike the last time where I used pl to uh, solve it, I'm going to try and get to the electroshock room. Because before I discovered the hook could be used from the east end hallway in order to get the green key, this was the only thing I could think of that could get me the green key. And it is very iffy. What happens is, you'll notice, I tell it to open the green door. And I automatically walk north. The green door is now open, but I walked north. And if I go south, I go south into the east-west hallway, but then I go north again. I am not telling it to go north. As you probably noticed, I use the abbreviations, and it is just doing it automatically. What I need to be able to do is go south, east, east, and east. So let's keep trying this. We'll go south, and I'm back in the room again. South, and I am back in the room again. South, oh, I went east, so I am now in the east-west hallway. I'm lucky because there is not an open door to the north and not an open door to the south. And I'm going to go east again, which will put me in a room that has the ability to go east 
or the ability to go north. And the going north, the door is closed, so I cannot go that way. So I'm going to go east, and I will either go east or west or stay in the same room. And I go east, and it puts me right back where I started. Go east again, and now I'm still in the same room. I walked into a wall. Now I want to go into the electroshock therapy room and there's single exit west and there's a green key here. There's a very large woman dressed in a uniform. She looks like the roller derby queen and she has a jagged scar just below her hairline. Then I walk, go south automatically and I walk aimlessly into a wall. She turns towards you and says, oh, you must be here for the treatment. Just come right over here. She gestures towards something which looks like an electric couch. Now, we already know that there is a green key in this room, so I'm not going to waste a turn trying to find it, because the soon as I do something, she's going to grab me and electroshock me, and I end up back in my starting room. Now, my hope here is that I'm going to get the green key, and I will automatically walk west. That is my hope. Oh, look, I walked west. This worked out really well because now I have the green key. Unfortunately, I'm going to go east again, so you can see. Back here where I am, if I had gone for the green key and I had walked the wrong way, we're going to just try and go south, I would have walked into the wall and she would have said I was not cooperating and she would have grabbed me and electroshocked me and I'd be back in my cell. You see, I am still under the effects, and this could go on forever, and I could try and go... And again, I'm back. Not back where I started, but it walked me out west. This is kind of frustrating because I've never had it go this easily. Normally, I have to repeat this thing 15 or 20 times the whole cycle in order to get the key and get out of there. Let's uh, plot our way through this, and then we will check our inventory. And you can see I'm carrying the green key. That is a brief rundown of the problem, and it not being so much of a problem. So that is pretty much all you need to know about Bedlam on the TRS-80 Model 1 using Level 2 Basic loaded from a 16K cassette showing all three of the possible endings that I have discovered and showing you the major danger of the game The Doctor with the Hypodermic and if you did not read the manual or did not have previous experience with the word pl would have been really, really frustrating. Again, I would like to thank you for taking the time to go through this with me. I really appreciate everyone who does take the time out of their day to watch these. It's really fun for me to share something that I enjoy as much as these. And being able to just enjoy them while sharing them with everyone, it's really hard to ask for much more that I could do with the time while playing them. I plan on doing this game again using the Coco, though I probably am not going to do much of a running commentary while doing it, because my purpose will be to determine if there is any changes to the game that may have occurred during the port process. As I have said before, I have received a request to work on Pyramid 2000, and I have also received another request in private from someone to work on Zork, which I'm kind of looking forward to doing. I would like to work on some of the Infogram games. Uh, Infogram was considered the pinnacle of the interactive fiction text game genre, the text adventures, so I'm looking forward to that. If there are any other questions, comments, considerations, or if someone else has a request for a game they would like me to run through, please feel free to ask. I'm always looking forward to new experiences. Anyway, I'm going to call it at that. It was wonderful doing this with you, and I look forward to the next one. Thank you.